Welcome to C3 San Diego. Need something fresh, real, and powerful in your life? Connect with us on social media, get live stream service notifications, podcasts, and up-to-date information on upcoming events. We are so glad you're joining us for a powerful, life-transforming message from one of our C3 San Diego pastors. We would love to hear about how God is impacting your life through this ministry. Please share your experience with us at info at c3sandiego.com. If you'd like to be a part of what C3 Church is doing in the city of San Diego and beyond, you can contribute financially by going to c3give.com and choosing the giving option that works best for you. We hope you enjoy this message. So good to be back at my church in San Diego. I tell you what, there's a lot of great churches in San Diego, but I'm telling you, this is one of the world's greatest churches. Come on, C3. And this could not happen. I know they're not here, but you don't honor just when somebody's around. Let me tell you how I know you really honor someone is how you talk about them when they're not around. Right? Everybody was, oh, Pastor Benny, yeah, but how do you talk about me when I'm not around? Pastor Jurgen, when you're in front of him, Pastor Jurgen, you're, you're the greatest, Pastor Jurgen. All those voices that you do, you can do despicable me, and then you can do this, and you can do that. There's nobody like you, Pastor Jurgen, but how do you talk about him when he's not around? He's not here. Pastor Land is not here, but this would not be here unless God called a man and a woman, come on, from the land down under, to come to America. Come on, can we, well, can we just honor our pastors, Pastor Jurgen and Leanne? I know they're not here, but come on. Thank you, Lord, for our pastors. Thank you. Thank you, God, for them. Only speak well of them around me, and here's the reasons why, because I've known them since the 90s, and uh, they are just some of the dearest, sweetest, kindest people, and uh, we went out to dinner last night. You know you're with a good friend when all of a sudden you look at your, I would say watch, some of you don't wear watches, but I'm old school, I wear my watch. And I'm like, oh, my goodness, it's three hours that's gone by. That's a, that's a good meal. Yeah. Amen. It's like, well, might as well stay. Hey, can we order again? I mean, I'm like, <laughs> he's paying, so let's go. <laughs> Amen. So it's all good. Wasn't the worship good? Can we give the worship team a big hand clap? <laughs> Thanks, guys. We're so good. Thank you so much, ladies, and so good. Well, it's good to be back here. Let me just dive right into the message and uh, you know, uh, I, I, I heard that, that Central Campus, 10 o'clock, was the rowdy, crazy, loud, responsive. It was just a rumor. Okay, fantastic. Uh, let's grab our Bibles, and uh, we're going to go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 3, and then we're going to go to Hebrews 11, verse 6, and we're going to go to 2 Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 7, and we're going to hit that really quick and do a drive-by on that really fast. and. You don't know what that is around these areas. Okay, that's all right. Oh, you do? Oh, oh, here? Really? Wow. Oh, man. Ah, oh, okay. And that Star Spangled Banner. Can you stand up? Come on. She, was that not amazing? Wow. I mean, that, that's better than the Grammys. That's better than the... I mean, it's like, whoa, Jesus. I, I mean, I almost fell out. It was so good. Okay. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3 says, and, and read it with me. Come on, C3. Uh, 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 which campus is Central? Ready? One, two, three. By faith we... So that the... Which are... Were not made of things... Okay, now let's go to verse uh, 6, please. It says, ready? One, two, three. Stop, stop, I'm sorry. I'm a former Catholic, so you used to, and also with you. Okay, you don't even know. All right. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Ready? But without it is for he who comes to God must believe that he, and that he what? Ooh, the stereo. It's fine. Good. One more verse. Second, second uh, Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. This is a really easy one, right? Ready? One, two, three, four. We walk by Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. Walk, by walk by faith. Look at your other neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor, looks like you're walking by sight. No, don't tell him that. Don't, don't tell him that. Don't, don't tell him that. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that it's true. And God, I thank you that the word that we speak out of our mouth is as powerful as the word that came out of your mouth. And we declare that in the name of Jesus. Come on, C3. Everybody said amen. amen. 
I want to talk to you about forward faith. I want to talk to you about forward faith, forward faith. I, I read the, 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 the scripture here where it says that, uh, that what, what we see was made out of things that were not seen, right? And so in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3, it says everything that we see was brought out of an unseen realm. What does that mean? It means that we cannot just rely on what we see in the natural, what, 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 what I could feel, taste, or see with my five senses. There is another realm. Come on, the supernatural realm. This, this building, yes, is here, but this, but this church did not start in the physical. Come on, it started in the spirit. That means God spoke to a man and spoke to a woman and spoke to them in, in a land down under. I've been to Australia 48 times. I appreciate every major city, every major movement down there. Some of the, the leaders now were in youth when I was preaching at conferences all across Australia, whether it was C3 or, or Hillsong or Planet Shakers or, or COC. I, I, I've seen what God has done there, and who would have ever thought that God would bring, come on, I think he's actually a Kiwi. Isn't he a Kiwi? Isn't he from New Zealand originally? Yeah. Pastor Jurgen, right? No. Germany. Germany, excuse me, Germany. Germany. He's confusing. Germany, Australia, whatever, right? But who would ever thought, right, that God would put it in their hearts to come to a city that he'd never been to, never seen before. You are sitting, come on, in something spiritual that happened first. And this is a manifestation of what God did, come on, in the spirit. That's why God gives dreams. Somebody said they're starting a company. A company is not started when you see it started. It starts in the spirit. It starts in the heart. It starts with a dream. It starts with God saying something to a man and a woman. And that's what happens. See, people say this, why? Well, I don't believe it until I see it. Oh, listen to me. You won't see it until you believe it. This is, this is what happens, right? So I want to talk about faith. I want to talk about forward faith because you need faith to go where God is taking you, not where you've been. I'm an expert of where I've been, but only God is an expert of where I'm going. So watch, everything about God is faith. I, I need to trust God. I need to trust him with my finances. I need to trust him in my relationships. I need to trust him with my business. I, I need to trust him. See, everything about God is trust. So what is faith? Faith is simply this trusting in God. I've been tithing since I was 10. I had the largest avocado distribution company on my block. You've heard the story, haven't you? I pick avocados in my parents' yard, and I even had an employee, my little brother. I was in Union. I was the original Walmart. Come on, somebody. And I remember picking those avocados and then going door to door selling avocados, 10, 12, 12 avocados for a dollar, right? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. I, I should be in that business again. <laughs> and then some, others, some other kids had their avocado trees, and they started, they started trying to move into my territory. <laughs> so I started saying, I'll sell you 14 avocados for a dollar. I drove them out of business. <laughs> and when there's no more competition, it went down to eight for a dollar. People are saying, well, it was 14 last week. I said, I know. I had no competition. Now I'm the only thing going. It's eight for a dollar now. <laughs> See, some of you got to be wise as serpents. Come on, and gentle as doves. <laughs> Being a Christian doesn't mean you're dumb. It means you have an advantage. You have somebody on your side. So I remember I'd come home, and, and I had, you know, those $1 bills, and I had those $1. And my dad would say, okay, son, put them all. And I'd line them all out on the table. And he says, okay, see that first one? That belongs to God. So I said, wait a second, Gad. I get to keep nine and give God one? This is the greatest business deal on the planet. I mean, this way I look at it, it's like, if me and you go into business and you say, you know what, Benny, you keep 90%, and I'll take 10. I'm like, a deal. And by the way, I'm going to give you everything that you need to prosper. I'm going to give you all the knowledge. I'm going to give you everything. See, but it takes faith, watch, to give to God and to trust him. That you get tested in your trusting. And so the Bible says that we walk by faith and not by sight. So what does that mean? It means that we are people who trust God. And now listen to this. We put our trust in God who we cannot see over the things that we can see. Our everyday actions are tied to a God who we believe is directing our steps. 
Notice we don't believe by faith, but rather we walk by faith. In other words, I have gone beyond believing, and now it's gone from just believing, and now it's into action, and I begin to walk by faith. I am moving into action. Walking is forward motion, heading towards a specific destination. My, my wife understands this because she loves walking. Come on, in the mall. You call it shopping. My wife calls it hunting. She's going to go and kill something, and, and come on, come on, ladies, tell me. Come on, man, I like to shop. I'm going to admit, I like to shop. I, I, just, I just like to shop. So be like, then why are you wearing those skinny jeans for? Because you can't. When you have legs like a woman, you got to show them off. Come on. You got to show those bad boys off right now. My wife tells me, I married you for your legs. I said, I know, baby. They're long legs. Come on, with the high heels. Woo, Jesus. Accentuating the... <laughs> Laugh, sir. It makes you look younger. So it's so funny. It's because my wife, she's on a mission. My wife doesn't meander, doesn't just kind of walk through the mall. It's like Nordstrom. Sykes, <laughs> Lenny, Neiman Marcus, Chanel. I'm like, how about Target? <laughs> Call Target. So you're on a mission, you're on a mission, you're on a mission. We're walking by faith and not by sight. Listen to me. We believe that as followers of Jesus, that our steps are being ordered by the Lord. I don't believe in the universe lining me up. I don't believe in a universal vibration, a hugging a tree. I don't believe in fate. I don't believe in luck. I believe that every step, God is ordering my steps, whether that's business, come on, relationships, come on, finances, come on, everything is being ordered by the Lord. Somebody give God a big hand clap right now. I actually believe that I'm here at this campus at the appointed time. I actually believe that all the hot summer nights that I am starting it off. How come I'm not in the middle? How come I'm not at the end? How come I, because I actually believe that I'm here at this campus. And let me blow your mind that you're watching online, wherever you're watching, all over the world. And God knew that I'd be preaching. A good looking Hispanic man would be preaching. Okay, I'm not good looking, but I'm Hispanic. Amen. And so, so watch, watch, watch. Because I get tired of people. I was just lucky. When you're a follower of Jesus, he's ordering your steps. Oh, no, I feel somebody's going to ready to start a business and you're going to walk into abundance. Somebody right now is going to do something in politics that's going to shift the nation. Somebody's going to begin to, I don't know, I'm, I'm going to prophesy this, but somebody's going to have a new app, a new invention that's going to make millions of dollars. Some doctor is going to have some kind of breakthrough and some medicine. Something's going to happen. Why? Because you've got to believe that your steps are ordered by the Lord. I'm not just meandering and wandering through life. I don't know what I'm going to do. I just don't know. I have no idea. I'm just going to try this and I'm going to try that. I'm going to do. I think I'll try being a preacher. Oh, maybe a comedian. A comedian would be good too. I don't even know. I wake up saying, God, you're ordering my steps. God, I know I'm going somewhere because you are ordering my steps. But sometimes you have to leave where you are in order for God to take you where he wants to. A guy named Abraham, Genesis chapter 12, and uh, this guy uh, didn't grow up in a, in a Christian home, didn't even really know God, and God shows up to him, right? And says to Abram, he says, Abram, I want you to leave your father's household. I want you to leave everything that you know and leave where you're at. And as you leave, I want you to go, and I will show you where to go. Now, I like it when God speaks to me and shows me where I'm going first. Right? I, like, I, like, like some of you in a relationship, you shouldn't be in this I'm not talking about your marriage. It's like, oh, I came to the right service. Ooh, yeah, Jesus, yeah. Uh-huh, mm-hmm, yeah, ooh, Jesus, I feel something on that one. I'm not talking about your marriage. I'm talking about some, some people, you're, you're not married, and you, you know you shouldn't be with that person. You know it's just not a good relationship, but you just, you just hang on to it because, well, Lord, show me the right man, show me the right woman, and when you show me him or her, then I'll leave this. The problem with that is you will never see what God has for you until you leave what you have right now. We don't like that, though. We don't, I know you're clapping because you're, you're a lively crowd, but we don't like that. We don't like when God says, I want you to leave someplace, and as you go, I will show you what I'm about to do. We don't like that. It's uncomfortable, but you have to leave the familiar and begin to walk by faith into your future. 
I mean, how would you like to be Jurgen, Pastor Jurgen and Pastor Leanne, leaving this incredible movement in C3 and working with Pastor Phil Pringle, and you're all like, yeah, because you are sitting in a building. This building wasn't here. You're sitting in a miracle. But I'm grateful for some pastors that said, okay, we're going to leave the familiar and by faith walk into the future. And as of today, we have a brand new campus, South Campus, and this campus, and North Campus, and soon to be East, West, North, South. Let's take over San Diego County. So Abram hears from God, and God says, Abram, I want you to leave everything. I want you to leave everything. Leave your hood. Leave your neighborhood. Leave everywhere. And, and, and I want you to go, and I'll show you where to go. So you can imagine Abram comes back to his wife, Sarai. Sarai is hot. She is incredibly, incredibly good looking. She is so hot that when she's like 90, it's like Abram says, tell me, you're my sister. You are so good looking. They'll kill me for you. I want to know what cream she was using. I want Botox. What are you getting? You getting some filler? What you doing? You look so good. Hey man, hey, there's no shame in all that. When I show up next year, I'll have a full head of hair. Yes, I got a hair transplant. That's what I'll tell you right now. So Abram comes back and Abram says, Sarai, God spoke to me. Honey, what did God say to you? He said we need to leave everything we know. Really? Is that really God? I mean, let's bring it back to where you live. He comes back and says, hey, baby, we need to leave La Jolla. Yeah. <laughs> baby, I don't want to leave La Jolla. That's the problem. It's not La Jolla. It's La Jolla. <laughs> I keep telling you, it has a Spanish root to it. It's La Jolla. It's silent. <laughs> well, what? I love this area. I, I know. But God said, we got to go. Where are we going? Don't know. God just said to go, and I will show. But I like La Jolla. Look at the ocean. I know. But God spoke. We just got to do what God said. Doesn't make sense. Don't know where we're going. Can we ask Siri? No. Can we ask Samsung? Don't burn in my hand. No. How about Google Maps? No. So you mean to tell me, baby, we're just going to kind of start walking? Yeah. But I like La Jolla. I don't want to leave La Jolla. All right. I guess we'll go. The person of great faith wasn't Abraham because Abraham heard God speak to him. The greatest person of faith, come on, was not the man. It was the woman. Oh, I, I'm trying to give you a shout out, ladies. That's a little weak. Thank you, second row. Thank you. Thank you. She has to believe that her crazy husband, who, this is the first time he's meeting God, by the way. It's like Yahweh shows up, like, Leave your household. Like, whoa, can we just start off a little bit easier? <laughs> How about like introduction, you know? Let's just do this. But really? Oh, wow. This is like really out there. Why don't you tell my wife? No, you tell your wife. You be a leader. You be confident. And so, 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 so can you imagine? They pack up everything. Here we go. Bye, La Jolla. I just... It's so like when God told me to leave Seattle, and I'm like, God, yes, you're going to take me to sand, sand, Lord, La Jolla. And God said, no, you got the law right, but it's Las Vegas. I said, Lord, it's hotter than hell there. <laughs> it's hell, Jesus. It's, it's 117 degrees. I cooked my carne asada on the cement. <laughs> it's so bad. Hispanic carne asada, you'll get it later. <laughs> so, so here's the thing. We love it when God speaks to Abraham. We love it when God speaks to Joe. We love it when God speaks to Steve. We love it when God speaks to Mary. But when God speaks to you, it's not because he's taking you somewhere that's going to hurt you or destroy you. He's taking you to a new season, a new season of blessing and breakthrough. But you got to leave the familiar and begin to walk by faith into your future. 
Remember this, if you can feel God and see God all the time, then you don't need faith. Faith says, I believe despite what I feel or what I don't feel. I'm tired of a culture that I don't feel it. I don't feel like it. I don't feel like it. I don't care what you feel like because you don't go by your feelings all the time. Thank God I don't go by my feelings on the freeway all the time. Oh, no, I don't know how it is in San Diego, but you know what? Did you just do that to me? I talk to people in my car. I'm psychotic. My wife says, why do you talk to people? They can't hear you. I said, because if I don't, I'm going to blow a vein in my head. No, is anybody, did, did, you, did, you ever, did you ever say this? You're like, did you just do that? Come on, they cut you off, right? On the, on the 15 or the 5 or the 805 or the 50, whatever. And like, you're like, and some of you aren't even, aren't even Hispanic. You're, you're a Caucasian. You're right, like, oh, did you just do that? All of a sudden, you, you start getting ethnic, man. Come on, you start throwing gang signs. And you grew up in La Jolla. <laughs> Little gang sign person. Oh, you're just, you're just a thug. I'm going to hit him with my Chanel. <laughs> That's funny, you should laugh. <laughs> I don't go by my feelings all the time. You know, you know, there are days when I wake up on Sunday and I don't, I don't feel like going to church. I preach four times Saturday night and three times Sunday morning. And there was a crazy idea that they want to do Sunday night now. <laughs> yeah, you don't have Saturday night. But anyway, like, I woke up there like, Wendy, I don't want to, my wife's Wendy, she's beautiful, she's Caucasian, so I'm not racist, I'm not a racist, my wife's, my wife's white, like really white, if you've seen my wife, she is like nightlight white, like white, 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 like she, there's no chance to tan, she burns, she's a lobster, okay, she laughs about herself too, okay, uh, but, but here's the crazy thing, it's like, I, Wendy, I don't want to go to church, I don't feel like it, she goes, well, you're preaching, I guess you're right. There are times when I'm in the front row and I'm, I'm the pastor and, and the, the worship leader says, raise your hands. Like, I don't, I don't want to raise my hands. I don't feel like raising my hands. I'm sorry. I don't feel like I'm, 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 I'm actually the guy that started all this thing. I don't want to raise my hands. I don't feel like raising my hands. <laughs> right? Come on, let's be real. There are times when I don't, want, I don't feel like being nice to you. I would love church except for people. No, no, people come up to me at my church, they go, wow, Pastor, you look really tired. I'm like, for reals? <laughs> for reals, you just told me that. Somebody asked, somebody said, looks like you put on a little bit of weight, Pastor. I'm like, for real? I felt like saying, you hippo, who are you to talk about like that? But I didn't say that to the guy. I didn't say that to him. I wanted to grab his handles and say, hmm. Have you ever felt like hitting somebody before? Oh, you hostile people, you. You need Jesus in this place. No, come on. Let's just be real for a moment. Don't you feel like giving somebody a piece of your mind every once in a while? Do you want know somebody betrays you? You want, you want to go like, Orale, vato, did you really do that? I'm going to knife you. I mean, are you hearing what I'm saying? But that's why we need Jesus. That's why we need God's grace, because we don't go by what we feel. And in fact, there are times when I don't feel like worshiping. When I start worshiping, that's when I get my greatest breakthrough, because it's not by what you feel. I remember we were raising money, and, and the Lord spoke to me, and he said, he said, I said, Lord, what should we give to the rising bill? That's what you call it, right? What should you give? And so I had this amount in my head, and the Lord said, $100,000. Yeah, 100000 So obviously that's not a lot of money for anybody in here. So <laughs> let's just take another offering for Rising Bill right now. And I said, the, the, the next thought was, I rebuked that thought in Jesus' name. <laughs> that cannot be God saying 100000 No, 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 Lord. You, you added too many zeros. It should be 10000 I couldn't shake it. I said, well, you got to talk to my wife. <laughs> this is always my out, you know. So we're like, like, you know, we're laying in bed, and I don't even know why. I don't know why you ladies do this. Why you want to talk? I want to sleep. Come on, man, help me out. 
Wife says, are you sleeping? And I'm like, it's just a setup. It's a setup. It's only, listen, I want to sleep or, but not talk. <laughs> Sorry, I'm Vegas. What happens in Vegas comes to San Diego. <laughs> so, you know, you know, Benny, I just been praying and the Lord's spoken to me about an amount and I'm like, what is it? <laughs> it's a hundred thousand dollars. He told me the same thing. <laughs> you know, when it's, it, it really, See, when you step out in faith, it actually will hurt. I wrote that $100,000 check. And it's like everybody's cheering but me. <laughs> I'm just being real with you. See, see, here's the, here's the thing. I don't feel like, I don't feel like. I don't feel like it. But if you could feel it, see it, and sense it, then it's not faith. We're too feely oriented. Now, I, 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 love the, I love when I encounter the presence of God and I could feel the holy. I understand, that's not what I'm saying. But I'm talking about just everyday life. I don't feel like, you never feel like tithing. You start trusting. And what eventually happened is I don't feel it. Now I love it. I love putting God first. Yeah. We're going to be raising money because we're going to buy a 90,000 square foot building coming up. Yeah, it's beautiful. But I'm, I'm, I'm hesitant. God, what, what are you going to ask me to give? Because if you ask me for 100,000, he might, he might stretch me a little bit more. You see, I don't know. I, and and if, you, if you were sat in the 830, it's totally different than the, than the 830. Because I just, I just sent something in here in this group that's different than the first group. That God is wanting you to say no to your feelings and yes to faith. See, see, listen, sight is not ignoring reality. I, I see my problems. I see my situation. But now what I do is by faith, I recognize there's a greater one. There's a greater reality. The doctor says, you have cancer. You're not going to make it. There's a greater reality that Jesus is my healer. That, that, that I'm down, I, I've lost all my savings, and, 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 and I can't do it anymore. But, okay, God, I'm going to start tithing off of the little check that we're getting. And then I got this, and I got that, and I got this, and I got that. Because, come on, the natural is real, but it's limited. There is another realm that is greater. That's a supernatural realm. That's the realm of God. That's where God begins to operate. Faith is unreasonable only within a restricted worldview that denies God the right to intervene. God's intervention is highly rational from a biblical perspective. I expect God to intervene in my life. I expect and know that I'm blessed and favored by God already. I believe that everywhere my foot treads, that ground has been given to me. You know, and we named our church the church, LV. Let me just tell you because somebody brought it up. I was at a table in San Diego at a relative's house, and they said, you're starting a church. And I didn't really think about the name. And they go, what's the name of your church? And sillingly, I said, you know what? It's the church, LV. Because I was reading the book, of, and it says, the book of Colossians, to the church at Colossae, to the church at Ephesus, to the church at Thessalonica. See, in the Bible, they, they said, uh-uh, it's for a city. C3 Church should be taking a whole city. And then once we take this region, we're going to go to Orange County. Then we're going to go to L.A. And we're going to go up the coast. And we're going to continue to possess because you're not limited when God is on your side. Somebody give God a big hand clap right now. So, so, so let, me just, let me just help you out. Because we can keep talking about faith, but faith must rest on two pillars. What I'm about to tell you is going to change your life. Because I was talking in the back office, and they go, my God, I, we never saw it like that. These stories are amazing. I said, I know. It's that good. See, because if you're going to have great faith in God, you must have these two pillars in your life. Number one, write this down. You must believe that God is with you. You must believe, write that down, God is, I know it sounds simple, but it's not, that God is with you. 
There's a guy in the Bible named Joshua. Joshua was the assistant to a guy named Mo. You guys know Mo. Mo was a bad dude. Mo was the original OG gangster. Come on. Mo was a guy, right, that had this stick. He had a stick, and he held that stick over the Red Sea, and it split. He would touch water with the stick, a uh, rock with the stick, and water would come out of the rock. He would throw the stick down or turn to a snake and eat up two other snakes that the magicians of, of Pharaoh threw down. The stick would touch the Nile River, turn to blood. The stick was a bad stick. It was an awesome stick. I mean, that stick, if I'm a Joshua, I'm like, one day I want the stick. Right? I mean, that stick is, I mean, just give me the stick. Well, the Bible says that now Joshua has to now take the children of Israel into the promised land because Mo could not go into the promised land. So now Joshua has to lead 3 million people, and all they've seen is a guy named Mo with the stick. And so uh, the greatest generation leader of his generation is gone, is dead, is buried, and God comes to him. Now, if you're God and you're going to say one thing to this new leader, what is it going to be? What is it going to be? Just think about it. What is it going to be? And what God does is gives us insight to our life. He gives us insight into how he operates. And here's what he says in Joshua chapter 1, verse 5. He speaks to Joshua and he says, no man. In fact, earlier in the chapter, it says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, you and all the children of Israel go into the land that you're going to possess. Then he gets to verse 5. He says, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with who? So I will be with you. So I will be with you. And I will not leave you nor forsake you. I just did that because it's bad grammar, but it woke somebody up. So what is God saying? Watch me. Why would God say that to him? Because the man is intimidated. The man is following a legend, Moses. And what does God say? God didn't say, I'm going to do miracles like Moses. I'm going to do great things like I did for Moses. He did not say that. See, because if I was uh, Joshua, I would say, okay, God, got it. You're with me. But where's the stick? Give me the stick, God. No, and I'm serious. Give me the stick because when I get in trouble, I'm going to wave the stick. And, man, something good is going to happen. Come on, Jesus. Give me the stick. Give me the stick. But it's not the stick. It's not a man. It's not a woman. It's Listen, God could use a donkey. God could use a stick. God could use whatever he wants to use. But the premise is, is that, Joshua, I am with you. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9, he says it again. Joshua, I want you to know something. I am with you wherever you go. I am with you. Listen to me. Uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you're going to be thrown into the fiery furnace. It's okay. We're not going to bow. We're not going to bend. We're not going to go to political ideology that does not line up with the scripture. No, we're not going to do that. We're going to stand up for what is right. We're going to stand up in our country. And watch me now. Then you can get thrown in the fiery furnace. And guess what happens? Jesus shows up in the fiery furnace saying, I am with you. Daniel, if you keep praying, you're going to be thrown into the lion's den. I'm going to keep on praying. And he's thrown into the lion's den. Why? Because God is with him. Little David fighting a giant. And a giant is bigger than him. And what we do is we make the giant really big. You know what? A giant is good because you can't miss. You can't miss. How do you view life? How do you view life? Oh, every obstacle, every giant. Come on, 20X thinking. Come on, help me now. Because listen, I don't need to be a Navy SEAL to understand the principle of God. That God is with me, and if God is with me, a giant will go down. If God is with me, walls will come down. If God is with me, it doesn't matter what's facing me. If God is with me, all I need to know, come on, that God is with me. That's it. That God is with me, dear lady. God is with me, sir. God is with me. I know it's simplistic, but do you really believe that God is with you? I must believe God is with me. One time me and Wendy were walking through a pretty tough area of town called La Jolla. Uh -oh. No, it wasn't really. It was a really tough part of town. And my wife grabs my eight-inch bicep. <laughs> Don't laugh. I measured them, eight inches. He's saying, well, what can they do? A lot more than your 22-inch guns can do, sir. Because when it gets really hot and you have your windows crack, cracked this much and you locked your keys in the car, don't call AAA. Just call me. <laughs> you have a problem? Yeah, my keys are in there. No problem. <laughs> there you go. Where's 22-inch guns? He can't do that. <laughs> She's grabbing my arm. She's scared. I said, Wendy, don't worry. If anything happens, I'll run and get help. <laughs> I 
See, God doesn't run and get help. He is your help. He is your present help. Come on, in times of trouble. He'll never leave you. Come on, he'll never forsake you. Come on, C3. He is with you. I married your beautiful wife, Wendy, and uh, she's awesome. And I have a 17-year-old son. He's a mini-me, literally, except with hair. And then I have a 12-year-old daughter, soon to be 13, July the 8th. She looks like she's like literally like 20. It's like, where did the time go? And I see all these guys like checking her out now. It's like, back up. <laughs> it may misfire. <laughs> and then I have, a, I have a nine-year-old. So I have a high schooler, middle schooler, and I have an elementary school kid. That's why I'm kind of crazy. <laughs> My nine-year-old is, uh, is a cool kid, but he has a problem. Like some of you grown men, he's still afraid of the dark. So he has a nightlight. I know some of you guys are like, no, just for the restroom. No, you're scared. I got you. I got you. Don't, 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 don't try, don't try. No, no, no. I got you. I got you. you. I feel you. I know what you mean, right? All right. So, so he's always sleeping with his sister or with his brother in their room. So I heard them arguing uh, a while ago, and I was having one of those bad days, and I'm not the greatest parent. Don't let an elevated platform elevate you, and I, like, I think I'm, the, I'm not the greatest parent. I'm, not, I'm, I'm doing my best by the grace of God. But I just had a bad day, you know, church folk, you know. Church would be good, and except church folk. I mean, I mean, just church folk. And I, I, don't know, I, I don't know what you church folk. I mean, just give me some sinners, man, that just, that just don't know nothing. Don't know nothing about church, you know. We have to debate all this stuff. It's like, okay, I know I'm a sinner. I need Jesus. Okay, I love you. That's where we're going to go. So I'm coming home, and, and they're arguing. So I go upstairs. Like, what are you arguing about? Because it's bedtime. And they go, hey. Dad, you know, we don't want him to sleep with us and sleep, you know, he needs to go sleep in his room. And it's like, but no, I, and I got the crazy eyes. You need to go to your room, Dad. I'm scared of the dark. I'm, I'm like, dude, you got your nightlight on. You got your bedroom light on. You have your closet light on. He has, every, one of my kids have their own bathroom. You have your bathroom light on in your room. Then you have a lamp on in your room. Technically, you have a sun tanning bed. You're going to tan in your room. True. Dad, I said, go. 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 Like, man, you're mean. You gave him a time out. Let me just tell you something. I, I young people came to me when I was doing youth conference. Like, like oh, please pay for me, Pastor Benny. Like, why? Because my parents are so mean. They gave me time outs. They took away my PS4 and my Xbox. And they took away. And I said, shut up. Just shut up. I said it kindly as I could. I said, I, I didn't grow up in a generation of timeout. I grew up in a generation of knockout. <laughs> knockout. It didn't really impact me too much. <laughs> he's, ah, he's crying. I go into our room and my wife goes, man, and my wife was mad because I, I did overreact to my son. I must admit, I overreacted to my son. Now she's overacting to me, overacting to me. You can't sleep here. You need to go somewhere. It's, it's going to be a cold night. So I don't care. I don't. I'm a man. I can handle it. <laughs> so as I'm weeping, going out of my bedroom, you know, I go, this is a true story. I'm not making it up. I go down this hallway, long hallway, long hallway, long hallway, big house, long hallway, really big house, a long hallway. And so I go to Benaiah's room. He goes, Dad, what are you doing? I said, I come in peace, you know. And I said, son, I, I'm going to sleep in your room. He goes, what? He's got bunk beds. I'm going to sleep in your room tonight. Really, Dad? He hasn't even had puberty. He's got this low voice already. I said, yeah, son, but first we got to turn off some of these lights. <laughs> but, Dad, I'm scared. Of the I, I'm going to turn off the lights. Are you sure you're going to sleep with me? I said, yeah, turn off all the lights. Get in the talk bunk, bunk beds. I'm laying there on this mattress. My wife said, don't buy the cheap ones from Ikea. <laughs> but they're for my kids. They can recover. <laughs> I never knew I would be the one sleeping on this mattress one day. <laughs> be careful, sir, when you're El Cheapo. So I'm on, the, I'm on the top bunk, and this is what my son says. He goes, Dad, are you still there? I'm like, where have I gone? <laughs> he can't see me, but he can hear me. Come on, he can't see me, but he can hear me. So he goes, Dad, how long are you going to stay there? Until you fall asleep. 
20 minutes later, Dad, you're still there. I'm like, bro, you would have seen me leave. Of course I'm still here. Go to sleep. <laughs> so he finally falls asleep. Yeah? And, and these are like metal bunk beds, and I start the descent off of Mount Everest. <laughs> eh, eh, eh. And then, and then the floor, I don't know how concrete floor can, but eh, and then he starts waking up. I'm like, I'm like Tom Cruise. <laughs> so funny. See, the crazy thing about this story is God spoke to me. The situation in my son's room actually got worse, not better. The lights went off. Every light was off. What was the difference between my son sleeping the night before in fear and the next day, which is the night I'm sleeping with them, when everything got darker, the only thing that was different was that his father was with him. Listen to me. His father was with him. Can I tell you something? It's dark for some of you. It's challenging. And you pray, God, turn the lights on and God's not turning on the lights but he wants you to know there's something better I'm with you I'm your father Luke Skywalker <laughs> and God says that I'm with you Betty Perez in the valley I'm with you on the mountaintop I'm with you the second promise that I could I got four minutes and I could drop it in three the second thing is not only God is with me, watch me, but God is for me. It's one thing to say God is with me, but is he for me? Because the enemy comes and says when bad things happen, he's not really for you. When you fail, God's not really for you. You feel condemnation. You feel guilt. You feel shame. God's not really for you, but the devil's a liar. Because in Joshua chapter 5, Joshua and I was looking at Jericho, and he's overwhelmed. And he says, I wonder if God is, is for me. The angel of the Lord shows up and with a sword drawn. And Joshua says, are you for us or against us? And the angel says, neither, neither, neither. He says, in the next verse, he says, neither. But, but he said this. But, but uh, Joshua, uh, neither, no, but as a commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshiped. This is Jesus in the Old Testament because the angel received his worship. So what happens is, is Joshua now is, is in, in chapter 1, God is with me, but now he's finding out in chapter 5 before he has to take the biggest obstacle of his life that God is for him. I'm for you, Joshua. Let me end with the story of my son, Benaiah. My son, Benaiah, is also in basketball. He's not really that accomplished offensively, but so he is the defensive specialist, a.k.a. he has no game offensively. <laughs> Sorry you got that from your mother, but because um, I could still play at my age. I'll snap your ankles. I mean, seriously. No, I know you all laugh, but wait till you see me on the court. Steph Curry got my old VHS video cassettes and watched how to shoot. That's not true. So he's playing basketball, and I taught him how to play basketball defensively because I was really good defensively myself. And, and so it's towards the end of the game. My son, he elevates, and he gets his rebound. And it's a beautiful rebound. He comes down, clears out with his elbows. I'm like, yeah, it's my boy. He looks at me. He's like, Dad, look, yeah, yeah, I'm right here with you, man. I'm right here with you, son. And then before anything could happen, I could say anything, he goes, takes the ball, and he goes, throws it back up. Beautiful arc, follow through. And it's like, I see the ball, and it's like, no rim, nothing but net. I'm like, no. I want to take an arrow and shoot it and blow the ball up. You know what I mean? It's just, and it goes swish, perfect, except it was in the wrong basket. Yeah. They didn't, the, the crowd didn't do what you did. Everybody started laughing. The opposing coach started laughing. The team started laughing, and now I'm on the sidelines, and my wife grabs my leg. Now, if you're a married man, and your wife grabs your leg, that's like, don't do it. Don't do it. Come on, come on, right? If you're a married man, and you grab your wife's leg, it's like, no, let's do it. Okay, anyway, just saying, just saying. That's a little Las Vegas slipped in there, just, just saying right now. Okay, somebody in the front row like this, somebody just grabs somebody. Ha, ha, ha. Smart man, smart man, sir, smart man. I know what you're doing tonight. Watch this. That's what married people should be doing. The best sex is married sex. I'm just telling you right now. 
Some of you single people, I'm just telling you. Anyway, so, so, um, so I'm like, I'm like, so they have to do everything. And as soon as they, they, they say we can come on the court, I sprint, I sprint and I run and my son's crying and he's, and he's broken and I'm, I'm mad and I feel like killing everybody. I'm just mad. And I get down on my knees and he said, dad, 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 look, dad, dad, I run, 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 dad, dad, they're all laughing. I'm, I said, Benaya, look at me. Look at me. Dad, look at me. I said, what a rebound. Clear out. Your shot and your follow through was amazing. Nothing but net. We just need to work on getting in the right basket. <laughs> Listen, because I'm ending. I said, your dad is for you. And this would change my life. I hear God told me, God whispered this to me. He said, Benny, your father, I'm your father, and I'm for you in your failure. I'm for you even in your failure. See, we believe he's for us when everything's going good and we're acting right and we're doing right. But I come from Las Vegas, Nevada. I came from hell to tell you that God <laughs> is for you come on c3 even in your failure god is for you even in your failure come on clap your hands right now i'm telling you we're done come on do you believe it that's how your faith can be strong sit down i got one minute and the service pastor is going to come up and magically everybody appears behind me it's the las vegas show look at this look at I got my lovely assistants right here. Look at this right over here. Amen. This is a good, this is a sign that we're ending, but we're not. Watch this now. <laughs> Two responses and then we're done. I'll give it over to the campus person. Feeling my heart that I was supposed to be here. What you didn't know is that I had originally told Jurgen I was, Pastor Jurgen I was going to have to cancel. And we were talking last night. He said, I'm glad, I'm glad you didn't do that after all. I said, yeah, I just, you know what, we worked some things out and I was able to come. And I just felt like this was the word I was supposed to give Central Campus. That God is with you. God is for you. You walk by faith, not by sight. Faith is trusting in God. And I did the whole thing. But I know there's some people right here. And I could pick about 10 of you out because I've been preaching. And, and you say, dude, your eyes are so big. You're making eye contact with me. I know you're looking at me. <laughs> but you, you're in a dark room. Circumstances isn't changing. But, but all of a sudden something changed in you. That God is with me. He's on the top, bed, top, top of the bunk bed. I can't see him, but I could hear him. I could, I could hear, I could hear him. I want to pray for you. So many people said at 8.30. If that's you, don't hesitate. Don't wait. Okay, there's a lot of people standing. I feel safe now. No, you know who you are already. One, two, and I want to pray for you right now. Come on, you know who you are. Come on. If you don't stand, I'm going to point you out because I, I, I just know because I'm under anointing. I feel this so strong. Second group of people, we're going to go three altar calls, stay standing. The next group of people is that some of you don't really believe that God is for you. And some of you have experienced some kind of failure. But today is going to change in your life. If that's you, I don't want to stand up because what are people going to ask? They're going to ask me about my failure. No, we're not. We're a church that covers. We're a church that loves. We're a church. Listen, we don't say shame on you. We say shame off you. But I want to pray for that second group of people that... With the, God is for you. If that's you, you know what I'm talking. You know, it's just in your spirit. You want me to pray for you, you need to stand too. Ready? One, two, three, right now. Come on. Come on. Thank you, sir, for standing. Thank you. Thank you for standing. Thank you. Thank you for standing. Thanks. 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 Thank you. Okay, let me pray for this group. Father, I just thank you right now. Come on, lift your hands towards heaven, those of you who are standing. And Lord, we declare right now, God, that you are for us. You are for us, God, that you're with us right now. Lord, I know the circumstances may not change, but it doesn't matter. You're in the top bunk bed, and you're saying, no, I'm here. You can't see me, but you can hear me. So I declare right now in the name of Jesus, in the darkness of your room, the darkness situation, that you rise up and say, God is with. God is for me. God is with me. I declare that right now for everyone who's have a failure. I want to declare over you that your Father is for you, even in your failure. And I declare that in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Last one, and then who's coming up? 
Sit down. You know that you are not a follower of Jesus. We had, I don't know, a handful of people last one, but you need to say, I need Jesus. I need to surrender. I need to become a follower of Christ. I need to say yes to Jesus Christ. If that's you, every eye open and every head up. We're going to go, we're going to go bold. We're going to, why, 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 why are you going to have people, you know, uh, look at me when I raise my hand because we want to see who's coming into the family. We want to see who's coming into the God's kingdom. And we're going to shout and clap for you. You ready? Are you one? Are you ready? See, that's me. Either backslid or first time. One, two. Come on, it could be one, it could be none. Ready? One, two, and three. Shoot your hand up high, 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 high. High, 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 high. Come on, that's you. That's you. Anybody right now, I just want to make sure. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Anybody else? Let's all pray this prayer. Say, dear Jesus, I surrender my life to you. Take over in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give God a big hand clap. Thank you so much for joining us online. We hope you had a powerful experience. We want to take this time to personally help you navigate the next steps in becoming connected. If you made a decision for Christ today, need prayer, or want more information about our church, go to our website, c3sandiego.com. And if you didn't get a chance to give online during service and would like to contribute financially, you can go to c3give.com and click on the giving option that works best for you. We look forward to hearing from you. See you at church.